Uh, next, I think we've got Mr. Roy from Texas. He yields to Ms. Fishbach. I'm sorry, Ms. Fishbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Johnson, I think Ranking Member Johnson had uh, asked you about um, how the Democrats' calls to defund the police and end qualified immunity um, have affected morale. I, I want to know how this would affect their ability to do their job, because that's what we're talking about, is having police on, um, you know, on the streets doing their job, protecting all of society. And, um, you know, first with defunding the police and second with removing uh, qualified immunity. Thank you, Representative. Um, and, and again, I don't wanna, um, you know, as a witness talk about one party versus the other party's policies. On this particular issue though, to, an to answer your question, um, you know, police officers, just like anybody else, they're, they're men and women that we grew up with, went to school with them, they live in our neighborhoods. Um, it affects them, it affects their morale, just as any other profession would be affected by the constant attacks um, that somehow police are not to be trusted, are violent, uh, are brutal, are racist, and this and that, by using individual cases out of approximately a million officers in the United States to say that, well, that's how they all are, that's how they act. They can't be trusted. They're brutal. They're racist. We wouldn't tolerate that type of broad brush attack on any other class of citizens, but it becomes acceptable for police. And the effect of that on morale is very detrimental. And the effect of that is bad for public safety, because like any other profession, whether it's your auto mechanic, whether it's your pharmacist, whether it's a journalist, if morale is low in the workplace, performance suffers. And unfortunately, in this case, when performance suffers, it's the public that pays the price in terms of public safety. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And, and not only are they, are they uh, people we went to high school with, but in my case, I have several in my family and, and former law enforcement officers that, uh, so I, I, they're in our family too, and they are part of our family. And, but I appreciate your insight on that. And it seems to me that now is not the time to be talking about removing qualified immunity. Law enforcement is under attack, like you mentioned, in cities all around America, and members of this subcommittee are, are, have called for defunding the police and, um, and members of Congress. Uh, meanwhile, crime is on the rise, and uh, we may see crime continue to rise. Uh, but So now is the time to be standing behind law enforcement and supporting them from attacks on their morale and their ability to perform their job. And uh, just a, as kind of a follow-up, Mr. Johnson, um, you know, Democrats believe that officers who can demonstrate in a court of law that they are acting in good faith should still be at risk of facing frivolous personal lawsuits. What kind of effect uh, will this have on the officer's willingness to intervene during a crime in progress? You know, doesn't, uh, doesn't ending qualified immunity punish officers who are willing to rush into volatile situations in an attempt to save lives and prevent further injury? Yes, yes, Representative Fishbach, it does. It creates a disincentive for officers to act because what we're talking about in the qualified immunity context, by definition, we're talking about situations where an unknown constitutional right, in fact, unknowable constitutional right, may cause personal liability to an individual officer. And because by definition it was unknown and unknowable, then trying to address that cannot, by definition, uh, deter other misconduct or uh, improve police policing because officers don't know what's allowed and what's not allowed uh, in terms of this. And, and, and in addressing you know, some of the, the legal arguments about, well, this lawsuit or this class of lawsuits and so forth, I, I get it and I understand the argument in terms of um, large groups of lawsuits when you look at them as a whole. But when you talk about an individual officer and his or her mindset they don't think about, well, it's unlikely that out of this class, I'm the unlucky person who gets personally held liable. The situation that um, it comes about in, in rank and file mind is that I might be liable. And um, it, therefore it's a disincentive, like, you know what, it's safer uh, for my career, for my family, my financial health, uh, maybe just not to take action in this case. And I think that's a situation that, that none of us want on, on any side of the aisle. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And I, I just want to say, you know, this, this hearing, we know the reason. This is just another chance for Democrats to try to vilify 
a profession which is built on selflessness and service. And Democrats want more drugs in the community. That's why we are going to the floor to deal with the, uh, the uh, marijuana bill today. And they want to bail out violent criminals. And now they want criminals to be allowed to sue law enforcement officers. And with that, I yield back, Mr. Chair.